Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There is that locked box, yeah. Mm
<clears throat> they have those poles with a, a blade. It's a rectangular blade. You know, you just need to go hack up and down to kind of break up ice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. I can't adjust that, unfortunately, because it's cameras up here. Roll it back a little bit and I'll catch you. There it is. But it won't stay that way. <laughs> so little button, stick a little bit of your stuff. I need an actual camera. <laughs> I think it's like something at the bottom. Of it. That's two. Right, right, right there. That's perfect. You got your perfect. Hopefully it stays. Yeah. You're up there. All right. <laughs> We're starting late. <laughs> it's tradition. It's tradition. Back to the meeting. Okay, if everybody, I did send the, um, last week or last month's minutes to to the emails so hopefully everybody had a chance to look at that so we don't have to spend too much time on that today that's better matthew is going to be late but he will be here All right, I will go. That's what I meant to do, but that'll work. All right, if everybody could join us for the flag slew. Well, we can just use this. Use All right. Oh, Rex just got here just in time. Flag slew for you. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States of America. All right. Welcome, everybody. We are officially called to order at six forty one PM. Um, Matthew will be late and we'll go ahead and call attendance. Vice President Kayla Sullivan. Oh, I see you here. Treasurer Brandy Wallace. Uh, 
I also see her there, but she is unmuted. All right, I'm trying to find where the mute button is. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Secretary Shander Kay is here. Silly Gill, Sally Gill, here. Desiree Murphy, were you able to make it? Yeah, I was finally able to get in here. Good. Cheryl Elfstrand. Here. And Farrell Davis. She's not here. Okay. And then we've got John Becker and Rex Tauscher. Any other? Oh, and Shonda Davis and Renee Toby. Did I miss anybody? Yes. Oh, hello, Greg. Hello. Here. Is Karen with you today? Negative. OK. Anybody else they missed? Susie Napes. Perfect. Thank you, Susie. Anyone else? All right, did everybody get a chance to look over November's meeting minutes? Yay, nay. My comment that I had difficulty reading it was that when I came on my cell phone, it was just one long line of single letters. Oh, geez. <laughs> so it wasn't set up for mobile, apparently. I don't, I don't okay. Like the phone. okay, so if I can bring that up. Right now. Yep. Speed reader. And I'm going to make this a little larger. Additionally, said agenda for but there was items in their marks showing who was here and down at the very end of it that part I was able to read it didn't say who won the jackpot drawing oh that was me yep that was well, John Becker <laughs> unless I couldn't read it correctly <laughs> nope I just forgot to write it in there so what I did see was correct correct okay. All right. I just figured John wanted to remain anonymous. <laughs> no, I like to be I like to be well known when I win. <laughs> he likes to be highlighted and celebrated. <laughs> All right. Was there any other comments on last month's meetings? Minutes. I move we approve. Second. Any further? Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Do we have any reading of communications? All right, then we will move on to membership. We do have, oh, that one was a double. And I found, there we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new members that we got from the Artisan Marketplace. And from the sounds of it, one of them is going is uh, signing up to be um, on our board. And we have those interested in, and there's one missing actually, now that I'm reading it, uh, in, in events and all that. So the new members' names, Ashley Bridges, Carolyn McLaren, Shaylin Houston, Deborah Maxwell, Carolyn Ungren, Richard Maxwell, Susan Campbell, and Susan Dole. Are there any objections to these new members? 
Move and approve. I move that we have this the new members. All right, so it's been seconded. All in favor of approving the new members? Aye. 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 Any objections? Motion carries. Welcome, new team. All right, Brandy, you are up for finance. Oh, and that brings our current numbers to 85 for the 2022 year. Um, did you want to either share the proposed budget or allow me to share my screen, whichever you prefer? I do have the link right here. Okay, so I um, presented uh, last week or early, actually, yeah, last week to the Finance Committee, the 2023 proposed budget. We met, um, had some proposed uh, new revenue, um, some ideas of um, what some 2023 revenue should be based on um, uh, the last uh, couple years of the, the sales that have come in. A, as well as um, some expenses. So I have, uh, based on that, prepared um, and is presenting to the club and the members the 2023 uh, budget. And it has so, been balanced. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a balanced budget. Um, the goal is uh, monthly, you'll see the budget. Um, in one column and then the next column you'll see the year-to-date expense um, and then a third column will tell you what the balance of that particular um, uh, category is. So on the screen here um, for uh, membership dues you can see that I budgeted the $1,500 um, and basically what that is is it's off of the the new amount and let me just tell you what that is exactly. So it is, um, actually we just projected $1,500 in uh, new membership dues. And then when you go to the events, uh, we're projected to bring in $3,650 for events and the historical events are the two rummage sales, one in October, one in February, or should I say February and then October. Uh, the tea party, the artisan fair that is four times that year, um, uh, one per quarter, the Christmas bazaar, the Halloween haunt, um, that's mainly donations. So I broke that down uh, by category. Uh, miscellaneous donations is if, if any of these events um, or has a donation jar, that's what that's for, or if somebody sends in a check to, um, to mail uh, as a donation. The other one would be the, um, I think it's called the Operation Smile. It's the Amazon account. When people have the club listed as their Amazon nonprofit organization, we get a percentage of their sales. Um, so that would just go into that category. Um, hall rental budget, $22,350. Um, it's a slight increase um, from last or from this year. Bingo, I broke it down into three categories, but it's projected that Bingo will come bring in $230,150, 3,000 being dobbers. Um, the Bingo cards, papers that were sold as being projected, $209,800. And that is an estimate of 20% increase from this year to next year. A couple factors uh, why we brought it up so high of the 20% is the uh, new advertisement in the um, value pack, we believe is going to generate some, some revenue, as well as um, uh, there was a couple months that Bingo was not operational in 2022, uh, extreme heat weather, um, but majority of it is that uh, new marketing effort that we're trying to get new uh, patriots in. So, that's the reason for that. Uh, as you are aware, we went ahead and approved the raffle tickets. So it is being projected that $17,350 in revenue uh, is anticipated for those raffle tickets. The uh, kitchen is uh, slated to bring in $22,400 
uh, food sales, pot machines and events, uh, 22,250. That's uh, right now, I believe we're at about 18,000 uh, year to date uh, for the kitchen. So it's, it's not too far off from adding um, a, a few more thousand to that. I will eventually break down the food sales, um, pot machine and events. I just ran out of time, but, but uh, those are all locked together. Um, and if we receive any Christmas donations for the dinner, we just estimated 150. Um, the miscellaneous category of $200 would be membership dinner donation as well. So the membership dinner donation would be the, the one that we do in, I believe it's March or April. Um, and then if we receive any donations for the trunk retreat, um, the goal is not to, um, well, we can get grants, but not be um, dependent on grants uh, for this budget, as well as transferring any money over from uh, one account to the other. That's a little tricky for this budget of how I presented it, but just because we have two different checking accounts, but as a whole, we're not transferring from one account to another. And then, of course, the goal is not to cash any CDs this year. So bringing a total revenue of $280,350. And it's anticipated that we would have that amount in expenses as well. Advertising, um, just the general club expense, which is the one that um, we are in the yellow pages uh, listed in, in various uh, categories throughout that book, I think three or four different times. Um, and then I just estimated um, events. Uh, we can, we can and budget. So the 1400 I should also clarify that it is the um, yellow page as well as the, um, oh, what do you call it? The, um, the Valpac? Yes. And then events is uh, $600. Um, building maintenance, $7,000, uh, $1,500 in supplies, and then $5,500 for press control and fire extinguisher services. Um, rental uh, deposit return. Obviously, we're going to um, have to return a refund deposits when people hold events. So we just want to put an expense category in there to um, to show that we've received it in and we're going to uh, pay it out. Uh, utilities, $14,430. Uh, those are your basic utilities, your water, sewer lights, internet, alarm, cell phone, gas, uh, the landline phones, electric and garbage. Uh, general bills uh, is your $5,510, which includes your club insurance, websites, and uh, Zoom meetings. Payroll is $120,360. I broke it down to uh, your custodian, your, your kitchen lead, rental manager, what the secretary, webmaster, and then either the treasurer or the third party payroll services. Um, and then of course, bingo being your best, biggest expense um, of payroll. Um, supplies, $48,250, uh, just basic office supplies, uh, printer and ink, those type of things, uh, janitorial supplies. It looks kind of low for the janitorial, but I went back and triple checked. So hopefully that, that's about right. Uh, bingo cards and papers, um, I did increase it a little bit just because obviously the more uh, revenue you bring in, the more uh, paper expense you're going to have. So that was increased a little bit. Um, I've heard throughout the year that um, you guys want to, to maybe possibly do some things with the park and or the garden. So uh, for the park, I put $500 in expenses. Uh, bingo prizes is the uh, prizes that, um, that they do for holidays. Um, it could be pinata, it could be cash prize, and that's up to the bingo manager how she wants to present that to entice people to come in. So we want to account for that expense. Garden, $500. Dauber's, $4,000. Uh, kitchen expenses, $15,000. Um, that's your food, obviously. Uh, bingo office supplies is $1,000. That's a little high, but I thought... Um, uh, to present a balanced budget, I put a little bit more in the uh, bingo office supplies. I don't anticipate that they're going to have a huge expense, but you just, you know, you never know. So I put that in there. Uh, raffle, I put that as a low expense, probably just tickets. I can't imagine anything else. This is a new uh, category for the club, so we'll see how that goes. Um, event expenses, $500. Uh, those are just, you know, typical uh, decorations. If you're having a special guest, uh, they may charge to attend and any other um, 
expenses that you would have for a an event. Miscellaneous, 500 bucks, just threw it in there just in case we didn't account for something. Uh, taxes, license fees, and permits, 49,500. We do have the raffle this year, so I'm not quite sure how that's gonna come into play for expenses. So I did put some in there um, as well as we'll be in a higher tax bracket with us bringing in more than $150,000 in revenue for bingo. I tried to accommodate for that as well. So hopefully um, that'll come in uh, on target. Uh, personal, uh, so the property and personal taxes, uh, 8,500, permits, license and fees, 2,000. That is your bingo licenses, your kitchen um, uh, inspections, health district fees, those type of things. And then miscellaneous, um, again, heard throughout the meetings that the goal of the organization is to provide for other nonprofits in ways that we can. And historically, I think it was more um, monthly or quarterly, you guys would provide uh, cash to either schools or um, other organizations. So I just put those in there. So the goal is to hopefully uh, get $5,000 out uh, back into the community. Um, year in bonuses, uh, we put a target of $2,000. Um, that was a, a topic that we talked about at the last finance meeting that will be next on your guys' agenda tonight. A membership dinner, the expenses, obviously you have the revenue and the expense, we wanna capture that but we have higher expense than the, the donation that we received because that is a perk of being uh, a member of the club is to get it some sort of uh, annual dinner. And then bingo payout, that is uh, part of bingo's um, pick eight, whatever uh, may come of it. I did project a little bit higher because I do know that there's some days that we go uh, days or weeks without um, somebody getting it and, and the jackpot's a little bit higher. So hopefully I, uh, for that accurately and then the membership drawing uh, based on $25 times 12 with every single member that was present one that's what your expense would be so again expenses matches the balance of uh, the revenue of $280,350 so uh, any questions Sally has her hand up I thought we decided we weren't going to do the yellow pages anymore that one was a 18 month commitment. And so because they gave us notice back in October of 2021, uh, we could not opt out until I believe, was it March or April of 2023, something like that. So yeah. I'm putting it in there uh, because we're obligated to now, whether we cancel it in March or not um, and divert those advertising dollars elsewhere, we can, but I still went ahead and accounted for it just in case. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Was there any other questions? No. I move that we accept uh, the proposed budget for 2023. Second. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Go ahead, Cheryl. Yeah, um, what's confusing me, um, I'm having trouble seeing it, but on the very last category, um, I have a question about, <clears throat> yeah, they're, okay, they're, yeah, the expenses, um, okay, you have, the, you have the donations, the nonprofit, but um, I, I was wondering why we aren't keeping, like, um, this bonus issue, if, you know, if it's approved, that would be more payroll, and, like, um, bingo payouts, so why aren't we keeping bingo-related expenses under a bingo portion, it's kind of stuck down at the bottom, but I would think that you want to keep bingo kind of expenses up with a, a bingo category, it's just kind of confusing about, I just was questioning the placement of it. So um, the next step once this is, this is presented as a club as a whole. So we look at the right. revenue piece, you'll see that I do capture bingo in advance, but when you get down to the expenses, it's really hard to capture those mm -hmm. um, by category. So I did expenses by, I should say it's hard to capture expenses as a whole by the revenue sources, right? Um, so I captured the expenses by the topic, like taxes, miscellaneous, whatever. So there wasn't a category. So the next part of this is to say, okay, of this budget as a whole for the club, I will now take that this whole document and piece it out by the five categories and the five categories is going to be bingo and that's where that's going to go that's going to go back up into a bingo expense so bingo will have their own budget that has their oh, okay. payroll, 
and then events will have their own budget. You know how I have an advertising for events up top with the general club. So those will be pieced out. And then for the utilities, each uh, section. So the club is okay. janitory. Those will all be broken out. So. Um, okay. So you, okay. You'll be breaking it out so we can kind of keep like, you know, yeah, by the subject bingo, bingo all together. This is just an overview. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Thank yes. you. And the goal is to have a separate by by events, uh, rental manager, bingo, so that way when those particular departments lead, kitchen, whoever, they can say, okay, you know, I have five events, I only have $600, how much can I, you know, advertise for the events, or I have kitchen and I only have $15,000 for, for the whole year, how much can I spend, you know, so... Mm -hmm. And, the, and then as far as utilities, that's where I'm going to break out the uh, um, the cost analysis, the, um, what's it called? The, um, I can't even think what the term is, but basically what, uh, Bingo will have a utilities category listing every single one of them, water, sewer, lights, internet, blah, blah, blah. Rental, man, rental will have the same breakout and so on. Cost allocation. That's what I was trying to think of. Yeah, yeah the, the independent, the individual, I don't know what you want to call them, revenue sources. I don't know if that's quite accurate, but um, we'll have uh, their cost allocation uh, outlined. It will be more broke down and detailed at the individual basis, but this is the general yeah. for the club as the whole. Correct. Any further discussion? I call for all the question. In, all in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Brandy. All right. You want to go ahead and talk about the end of year bonuses? Yeah, so the committee met to talk about the bonuses, and there's a couple conversations uh, that it, it went to. There was a couple factors. One, um, do we have the, the means financially to, to do bonuses? Um, are we allowed to by law, and what does that mean? Um, the other caption is, once we start this president's, this presence, whatever you want to call it, the um, once we start it, can we not it's hard to go back on back to it. I can't think of the, I can't pronounce the word right now. It's late. It's been a long day. <laughs> um, so there was that uh, conversation and then the dollar amounts. Um, so, um, so do we have the means to do it? I mean, in all honesty this year, no, we don't. But we felt it was important, the committee, as well as um, the um, directors, board of directors, board members, um, felt it was important that with everything that's gone on in the last year and the amazing workers that we have dedicating their time and efforts to make the club successful, um, you know, that's through extreme heat, um, illnesses, closing down because of COVID. Um, we've had a lot of people step up uh, to the plate and, and do double duty. Um, and so we felt it was important to, to recognize them in that. Uh, we don't have a lot of money. We would love to have given um, everybody that um, uh, what was proposed, uh, but I just don't think that we're there yet financially in the club to do that. Um, we did look into the rules as to, as a nonprofit, can we um, give them a bonus? Um, we did confirm that, yes, we can give them a bonus. It has to be taxable. It has to be part of their payroll. Um, so, um, and then the other thing is, is we can't just give it to them just because we want to. It has to be tied to performance-based. Um, so obviously we're not uh, at the point right now that we're doing performance evaluations. Uh, that's something that we're going to start in 2023. Uh, but because of everything that I described to you a few minutes ago, 
uh, we're taking that that as a performance basis. Is all these people have um, stepped up to the plate, um, and any current employee will get um, get a bonus. Uh, the downfall of that is that we did look into it, and volunteers unfortunately cannot get bonuses um, or some sort of uh, pay for volunteering. Um, it, it clearly states in the nonprofit state of Washington rules. Um, but what the club did um, want to provide those volunteers, we understand um, that they're dedicating their, their private time and um, to the club. And so we want to offer them a Westside Improvement Club gift certificate, um, good for one year. And we assume that they're volunteering for the club because they like what the club, club is about and what, what we have to offer. And so um, it's our understanding that that they may get meals already. So um, we just, uh, it was decided that as a volunteer, they would get a gift certificate and remind me, I think it was a hundred dollars. Was it 50? $50? $50. Okay. So it was $50 gift card uh, or gift certificate um, that will be created and give to those volunteers. And what that allows them to do is to get a discount on uh, bingo daubers because those we purchase, so we can give them, a, um, um, they can get a, a dauber or two, then get fifty dollars worth of daubers if they wanted to. But so that gift certificate can be applied towards daubers. It could be applied towards um, an entry fee to an event that the club hosts or has. Um, it could be a, a gift certificate towards. Um, a table that they want to be a part of at the vendor fair. Um, so those are the type of things that can be used. Like again, we can't give them money. We can't give them a gift card. We can't give them any um, money. Actually, is what it states. Um, so, but we can give them in-kind um, services or in-kind um, value. Uh, so, and I believe there was uh, the proposal was for three volunteers. If I'm if I understand that correctly. So that's that's what the, the finance committee is, is presenting um, for the volunteers. Um, then the next category is how do we uh, divide up um, the rest of the employees or I should say the employees. Um, so we put it in two categories. You have the manager and assistant managers in one category and then you have um, the other employees. And so, um, we just basically we just threw out numbers and um, we felt that a thousand dollars was sufficient for um, this year um, and as you guys seen for next year uh, we have allotted two thousand for next year um, there's some caveats and I'll explain that here in just a minute so what we recommended is that um, each manager or assistant manager I should say manager and or assistant manager will receive two hundred dollars in um, a, a bonus, again, it'll be added to your tax, uh, your paycheck, and it will be taxable. Um, and then the other employees will receive $100. Um, moving forward, um, we will, in 2023, require a one-year um, employee um, evaluation. Yes, you have to you have to be an employee for one year before you can receive a um, a bonus. Uh, the reason why is we don't want an employee to come in on on you know November first and then they get a hundred bucks and then next thing you know February first they're out the door. Um, we felt that the bonus is again has to be tied to um, performance based and you know and on, honestly you can't you don't know somebody's performance within thirty to sixty to forty five days. Um, of course, they're all going to be on their best behavior, right? Everybody is for 30 to 60 days, usually, and then <laughs> that starts tapering off, right? Mm -hmm. um, so not everybody's that way, but, you know, you have a handful that, you know, set it up for for um, for the other people, and there's always one bad person out there that ruins it for the rest. So long story short, we felt it was important that everybody on board today um, gets this, but moving forward in January 2023, those bonuses that um, may come uh, to you guys uh, in December of 2023, they have to be there for at least a year. Um, they also can't be on any probation or um, some sort of reprimand, um, meaning that let's say in April they were in trouble and they did, I don't know, standard work 
work is they were late, right? We told them stop, knock it off, stop being late, come in to work on time, right? And they keep doing it. So we put them on a probationary period for 90 days to monitor to make sure that they show up on time, right? So they can't be in that type of status um, to receive a bonus because obviously to get a bonus, you have to be a good upstanding employee. So we're rewarding them for that. Again, because these bonuses have to be uh, merit-based or uh, performance-based, um, the um, manager of each department will be providing um, an employee evaluation to the president um, by, um, I, think, I think we said November 1st. Um, December and, 1st. And the managers will get their evaluations done by the president. So I think we have two managers. Um, so those two uh, managers will get the evaluation done by the president and then the other manager, which is the bingo, will, will uh, do the performance evaluations for um, everybody that's uh, within her uh, purview of, of staffing. And again, those just need to be to the uh, president. Um, they need to be presented to the finance committee um, by November 1st. So that way the uh, November 1st board meeting or finance committee meeting um, the treasurer will confirm that revenue is uh, coming in as projected and that the club has the means and the, um, uh, the ability to give out bonuses. Uh, we also felt that it was important not to uh, put a specific dollar amount uh, moving forward for the evaluations, meaning uh, we budgeted $2,000 and if uh, we have maybe, maybe we only have four employees and we thought, you know what, these managers are doing really great. We're gonna give each manager, cause we only have two $500 and the other employees we have four and we're gonna give them 250. So the point is, is that it's gonna be up to the manager and or president to determine the amount of um, bonuses based on performance that that particular employee can, can earn. Um, with the caveat that it has to be budgeted. So between all the employees, the most that you could do is 2000, unless the finance committee um, or the treasurer says, hey, we are doing great in revenue. We've projected everything and it's all because of so-and-so and we're gonna give them a, um, an extra amount. So um, we felt it was important to recognize that um, and not hold to $100, $200, whatever. Um, let's see what else. Um, I think, I think, I, oh, and then the uh, bonuses is, is per employee. So if you do a job share, great. We thank you so much for spreading your resources throughout the club in different areas, but it is per employee. So um, uh, it, it was a tough decision to do that. We know that people are doing uh, two different hats, but um, it, it's just, uh, it, it's just, just the way it is. Um, so I think that's it. Um, anybody else can add comments? Yeah, Brandy, can you hear yep. me? Is this Cheryl? Yep. I, th I thought I thought that um, we were talking about a like December tenth or something about um, you know because you wanted to have time to get the evaluation. Oh, okay. So November. Not, I thought okay, it was so December. November 1st is the uh, uh, treasurer has to report. Okay. Oh, okay. You're right. Okay. You're then, right. Yeah, December 10th. And then, then we would, um, I get, well, we'll go, it would go to the board and everything. And, and we would see also provided we have the money. That's the thing. It's not a, we don't want to set a precedent like this expected every year. It's all based, basically, do we have the funds to do that? And the next question, of course, will be how much, et cetera. And um, we still are going to have some more discussion on it at the board. So then the idea was if everything is okay, they would get it ideally um, before the holidays start. And I think you mentioned, um, we didn't want to tie in about the dollars. I was specific, but I think that was the main thing. It's not a, it's not a given every year at all. It's been, and the performance thing was, um, how was it about, 
Oh, I thought we have a senior moment here. We we were we didn't want to do it early enough so that people get their performance evaluation and there's five or six months until December. Um, you know, if we, they or I get it, you know, if we didn't want to do it too early, we wanted to, to string it out so we have almost the full year's work so people qualify uh, for that. That was one of it. I was trying to look at the notes. So that's all I had to say. And then one more um, thing that I just remembered is that the bonuses will be paid the Thursday before Christmas. We didn't want to pick a particular date. Um, so we just said, hey, the Thursday before Thanksgiving, or Thanksgiving, the Thursday before uh, Christmas. Christmas yeah. um, so obviously, if Christmas is on a Thursday, then you'll get paid the, the week before. But um, that would be when those checks would be issued. Was there any other questions about um, end of year bonuses? I move that we accept the end of year bonuses as a new precedent for the club. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so Greg Mitchell wanted to bring up again um, about the discussion of whether to move investments to another institution. I believe that was uh, talking about the, the banks. Greg, did you wanna? Um. You know, I'm not that financially savvy, but I just want to know how secure our CDs are as far as, you know, waking up one morning and certain banks are dissolved, uh, whatever reasons, political or government, mm -hmm. or whatever. I, I just, it would just be sad uh, all the years of people's work, you know, just down the tubes. Um, but I'm more than willing to defer uh, any concerns like that to the financial committee. Um, we don't need to take time up now unless somebody wants to discuss them. Um, one of the tasks um, that I was tasked with earlier in the year was to reach out to um, uh, an investor in uh, was a contact that um, Matthew had, and I can't think of the name of that institution right now. It's, um, they're a well-known um, investment company. And uh, we had some conversations earlier on and she wanted to know, you know, do we have a reserve? And, and so we, we kind of had um, some conversations, but I couldn't give her anything of value because I didn't know what the numbers were. Um, so my goal for 2023 for, um, as a treasurer is to one, look at the, the financial of those CDs investments and what doesn't make sense because she did start, she did say um, that we may want to, um, CDs, CDs aren't the best way to go, especially if it's a lot of money, you want to put in some sort of in, in a different investment and um, I don't know the lingo either. So, but you know maybe you want to put them in stocks and bonds and those type of things and then you want to have you know a savings account that actually has um, um, um in cash there that works that helps with your cash flow when you have a shortfall because your cds you know you're going to get penalized quite a bit um if you cash it out early and then so she so anyway so the um so that's the goal is to look at the, the finances of the cds and what are the options of the club you know, this is the amount that we have and she's going to give me a portfolio that says this is what I think that your club should do um, with the finances that you have. So that, that's one of the goals that I'm going to work on in 2023. And then the other one is to work on getting um, uh, property tax exempt status for the club uh, for our property taxes. So those are the two priority things uh, for me now that we have the budget set and I, can, I got everything in line with the taxes. Um, so yeah, so those are the two two major things that I'm going to work on for 2023. Rex, go ahead. Uh, just a point of interest. Uh, 
the CD rates at Kitsap Bank, I believe are going up. They're somewhere over 3% right now. That's where we have our CDs now. When they renew them, see about rolling them over maybe to a different uh, date for the maturity. Oh, okay. Yep. It's up about three and a half percent, which is most of the financial institutions around the area. It's, it's still insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So let's hold it in the CDs at our current bank if they will give us the three and a half, around three and a half percent interest rate instead of the 0.2 percent that we're probably getting right now. Well, if it's a CD, okay. I'll look into that too. I'll look at that as well. If but there's a different bank, they can offer a higher rate. There's no, no penalty when it's mature. Right. So but you can roll it over into a different yearly or monthly rate if it's a six month or eight month or a 10 month. But the lower the, the, the less time you've got in the CD, the lower the interest rate. Not necessarily. It depends, it depends on, on the what type. the restrictions are. Depends what they're offering. Yeah. Right, right now, like they say, the credit union has a similar type thing, but it, you, 500 is the minim, minimum. And some of them say it has to be new money. But if you're dealing with a bank that's holding our CDs right now, you have a leverage that you can say, this is what we want. Okay, I'll make sure I'll go to a couple banks and find out what uh, they can offer and present it. Yeah. Uh, Greg, you had your hand raised? Uh, yes, I was wondering if, if there's any distinction or any thing in the bylaws that say we have to do it with banks, or could we look into, for example, the, the Navy credit union? Is that a, a, an option to look into? I'll look at our bylaws and our articles of incorporation and see if it dictates if there's a certain method that we have to hold those to. I'll look into that. Okay, thank you. And then I'll also check with the credit union when I go through the uh, CD rates through different banks to see if they'll allow us. Any other questions? Okay, so as far as bingo, uh, Teresa did mention that she wasn't able to get the numbers out for us. Uh, she had a lot going on and she was here and walked off without them. So she will be presenting those numbers next month and make sure that we have this month's in the minutes as well. Uh, as far as building improvement, uh, I did get an update from our audio guy. He is waiting on the speakers to arrive. And then as soon as those speakers arrive, he is going to get a hold of us to uh, get them installed. Oh no, he emailed. They're installing on Friday. Oh, never mind. New audio is being installed on Friday. We also got the fridge replaced for the renters. That will be here tomorrow between 11 and 3. Where is that being installed? We're gonna put it back where the old one was. I checked with Teresa because nobody usually sits at that table because it's right there by the door and all that. So we'll put it there so it's easy, easily accessible to the renters as well. You don't have to be in the kitchen. Exactly. <laughs> and that will be installed in Katie's room. Do, do we need a ground fault plug-in for that refrigerator? That's maybe a question. Mm, I will find out. You said ground fault plug-in? Fault isolation. Yeah, self-isolation. Self if the compressor jams and it draws too much current. Is it going to pop yeah. everything? Okay. Um, And then the electric. I know that... I called MD Electric today. And uh, asked them if they had put in a special circuit for for the uh, mercury vapor light bulb, uh, and uh, they didn't get back to me. I don't know if they're pretty they're pretty busy. They said they were busy out great time, so I don't know if they're going to be able to get over there. But I just wanted to find out, and I didn't bring over a magnifying glass so I could read 
Can read the uh, thing. I, I brought my flashlight so I could see the numbers that are marked oh, on okay. the okay. 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 And then Matthew, you said that Ahern. Coming tomorrow. All good. And what, what all are they doing tomorrow? Do you know? So they are not, they were not able to give us a proposal because the diagnostic will be part of the repair. They yeah. don't know what was done there. So they are going to have to follow the map left by MD. Uh, so they, it's just going to be time and materials for however long it takes for them to fix it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's tomorrow morning. Do you know what time? Oh, yeah. Um, my question is, didn't we already pay for all the electrical to be done and they didn't do the upstairs because it was too hot or did they finish that? There was a contract made and they fulfilled every part of their contract. Not everything we wanted done was originally put into the contract okay. from my understanding. Right. Okay. Because I had to part of the contract. So 8 30 a.m okay um so if are you going to be here for yep. that uh how late are you able to stay uh i ha don't have i mean if i've got a zoom call that i need to be listening to actually no i can listen to the recorder version of that later so i'm free until one okay if because the fridge is supposed to be delivered between 11 and 3. oh and so if you're here and able to be here, they can come and do that. If you need me to come and be here, let me know. Okay. Um, well, you know what? One o'clock is a Zoom as well. I could be at doing that in the office while I'm waiting for the fridge to show up. Perfect. And All right. Ask Ahern when they're here if they need a ground fault isolation, you know, for the refrigerator that's going to be out here in the common area. Oh, good idea. Yeah. yeah. Here. If you'll be able to answer that. Thing. Go ahead, Rex. Uh, just a quick thing on electrical. Somebody hung a sign on the thing out here to say to turn the switch off for the exit lights. When MD Electric did the changes, they put all the exit lights on a socket circuit that is not controlled by a switch. So that is no longer valid. Okay, can we just take it off? Yeah, well, there's no, it doesn't do anything. That switch out there has been de-energized, so. Oh, okay. So I, it, it was an old item. So. Okay, so and I noticed the exit light is out over here, which is the violation of the fire code, uh, and the bulb will probably have to be replaced if we have bulbs for it. We can do that before we leave tonight. Okay. And I noticed a couple of the other exit lights are getting kind of dim, which means probably one of the bulbs, as most of them have two bulbs in them. They're probably out. Oh, and I wanted to add that we just had our fire extinguishers um, checked and updated. Wait, yep. wait and, uh, they didn't put the fire extinguisher signs on the one over here. That was one of the items we had last time. We tried to obtain additional what? labels, like the one over in the corner. It's got two labels on it. This one has none. Okay, so and I don't know if there's labels on the other fire extinguishers that's in are in the furnace room. Last year they forgot to certify the one in the furnace room. Well, last year, two years ago. We should have a total how many fire extinguishers we've got so we get them all and the types. Okay. So, so we got a so they they come here, they don't miss any of them. I know that well if we have the Hi, Connor. Come on in. If we have them, uh, fire, fire marshal comes in and does not sweep on it. We don't want to get Okay, watch your feet. Don't step on the cork. Can you go sit right there? Yeah. Okay, he's very quiet. Sit right here and watch your tablet. Me too. Okay. 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 Okay
Yeah. Sorry, guys. Give me just one second. Had to switch over to mom. Hey, you know what? No. <laughs> hey, cutie. No. Uh, Name's Charlie. Uh, no. Mom. I'm right here. I'm coming right you're here. You can see Connor, you, Con you want to go sit where Scarlett's at and Scarlett can sit over here? No. Yeah. Then come sit right here next to Matthew. Oh. Hey, bud. I got you. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Hey, purple. I know. Here's your purple. There you go. Sit right next to mommy. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. No. Hey. Okay. Was there anything else? Is there anything about else about building improvement that we need to touch base on? Yes, we do have one other item. I put the light bulbs back in on the stage on the upper lights because they were taken Dad, out of the haunted house. Mm -hmm. the bulbs are different, so we need, we need to replace them with whatever bulbs were in the picture. Okay. I think we got a standard. Mom. One in there and a mercury vapor oh. one in this one, and who knows what the one in the middle is. Okay. All right. Anything else for building improvement? Mommy. Just a minute, Scarlett. <laughs> okay. So the events and entertainment. Uh, we had the um, Founders Day. Uh, weekend. No. Yes, that'd be great. Sure. All right, so the next item on the agenda, events and entertainment. Uh, do we have our yeah, events wait. chair here with us? All right, so we've got the report from events and entertainment. Is We've got the Holiday Bazaar coming uh, December 10th through 11th, 9 to 4 p.m. Uh, I have it on good report. We're going to be getting a visit from Kitsap Kelly. Kitsap Kelly is the gnome on the Rome uh, for the Greater Kitsap Chamber of Commerce. That's cool. This is their event, uh, their special thing that they're doing to support local businesses and uh, draw attention to them on social media. People will come by for uh, events frequently to get a selfie with Kitsap Kelly. No, we. So. The um, we've also got the marble tournament. Susie, are you here? Yes, I'm here. All right, can you tell us about the marble tournament going on? In, that's in January, right? Yes, so I've actually never been to the marble tournament, but each pack will have their own competition, and then those move up to district level. So this would be um, our district now includes the Olympic Peninsula, so Kitsap County. Um, now also includes Olympic Peninsula. So I'm really not sure how many people will actually come. I can take notes here. Okay, here. here. You do your what you got to do. Okay, so this will be the final tournament or they're going to be having all their own competitions at our place and then the tournament as well. No, this would be um, the winners from each pack. Would okay. Be moving up. And the Elks have done it. I wanted to reach out um, to the the other um, the one that had done it last year to see what needs to get okay. done. I never heard back from her. So okay, what do you need from the club to make this happen? Uh, I was gonna ask if they already have the the mats because it's there's it's a four foot circle and it's usually felt. I believe they already have that. Um, I just didn't know um, like how to do the 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 winner competition. So I, I just haven't got hold of district to see. Um, they have the rules posted, like how to play. Okay. And that that's fine. I just didn't know how to win each comp each round. And it would be by a grade level. So the winners by each grade would compete. Okay. All right, um, let's see, let me get back up here just a moment.
do still have a couple of uh, vendor tables open. And we are going to be doing still a breakfast with Santa, but we're no longer going to be requiring pre-registration. Uh, so we'll just have the, the kitchen open for breakfast time. Is it going to be by donation? Uh, or is it going to be charged? I think it is going to be by donation. Um, and then uh, I was hoping to ask Shonda. I think she may have to leave. Um, um, the advertisement says $15. Yes, we recently changed that. We did not get any pre-registrations for it. And so we did not get any, um, there was no interest shown and there's gonna be another, uh, Sunny Slope is also doing a um, breakfast, breakfast with Santa that day and they are not charging. Uh, so we figured it would be in our better interest um, for both groups, if we just uh, did not charge for hours and kind of help to uh, advertise for them as well. Okay, and um, I showed you the YMCA also has a, the same a free breakfast pancake with Santa. At this, on the same day? Yes, exactly. Bremerton um, YMCA, free breakfast with Santa from eight to 10. So I was like, well, yeah, yeah. just be doing breakfast here. Uh, yep. Not be charging for it this year. Well, especially if nobody else is charging for theirs, it would be silly to charge for ours. Do you want to change the picture on the Facebook event then? No. Yeah, I can do that. All right. And then getting back to the marble tournament. Um, so you're going to be getting the four foot circles. Those are the pre previous championship location you think has those? Uh, I reached out to um, the past, um, you know, Elks chair and then okay. the district um, to see what it is that um, <laughs> we need to do. So, all right. Um, what about manpower? Is this something we need to have people volunteering for? Um, that I'm, I have never been in the past because it was always mm -hmm. really early on Saturdays and my kids don't get up early. <laughs> so, okay. And they don't like competition. So some kids are okay with it. My kids, anyways, I, so um, are we, you just needing help with publicity? How can we help? Yeah, I think, um, I've never created um signs online okay so we can help with publicizing it um other than that it sounds like it's basically just a donated rental uh, i i think so because uh the usually the scout leadership would have people running it okay so, so you don't need manpower you just need the donation of the space quick quick question <laughs> How many marble platforms are you going to have to have? You know, I'm not sure. And we now include the Olympic Peninsula. So I'm not sure how many people would actually show up. So if you can gather up as much information as you can and then bring it to the events committee, we can try to help as best we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And I don't know when the events committee meets, so. We're the last Monday of the month. Last Monday of the month. This is Rex. Uh, I have a comment on that. Marble tournaments. Okay. On the East Coast, it's a big deal. They end up cool. taking Wildwood in New Jersey, and they have it right on the beach, but they have concrete platforms that they hold oh, wow. tournaments on. But it has to be a level surface, probably right. like our two front rooms out here that have concrete floors, that are nice and level. And the, the pads can be put down there. Or if you're outside, we don't have a level area, less maybe a parking lot. It's kind of hard to shoot marbles on the asphalt, yeah, even with the pads. OK. But they do have guidance online for the East Coast, because they have Philadelphia people coming down to New Jersey. 
Well, and the, also the New York people coming down for our East Coast tournament. Yeah, this is just a Cub Scouts I thing. Really, so they've got their thing. own rules. That's, yeah. But they have I asked have them the if we platform. could have the kitchen open. I don't know if that would be possible if you guys Ooh. would like to sell food items. Yeah, we can get a request in. Imagine there that way. Okay. What's the pack number again? Well, this is a district. So it, this would be Kitsap District. The last Monday of the month. What time is it? Six thirty. Yeah. Okay. And as far as events, I also wanted to make note that the Founders Day and the Members Dinner, we had $114 in donations. And then we've got um, quite a few members who have renewed as well. Excellent. The last Monday of the month is December 26th. Um, might not be able to do it right after Christmas, but we'll have the so we'll have to uh, so we'll events, events yeah please add Susie and so that she can stay in the loop there uh publicity so let's hear more about sign making so one of the biggest needs that we have for publicity is uh helpers we, we need people to help make signs and put signs up in their local neighborhood community churches wherever they can so we were hoping if each person, you know, was willing to help, made three to five signs and just post them up in their um, in their area. You know, even if you're driving to the club and you don't see a sign where you think there should be one, and just hop out and post one, that would be helpful. Right now we need, right now we need ones for the holiday bazaar. Uh, and so if we can get anybody to help make those signs. Basically all we need on them is the, you know, holiday bazaar, December 10th and 11th from nine to four and then we're at. So anybody who can or will, you know. Um, people, I think we that. should ask permission uh, before we just put signs up. Like, are we allowed to put them up on? As think, long as you take them down at the end of the week. Uh, I think also it depends. You have to make sure that they're not on utility poles. You can put them, uh, elsewhere, but they cannot, they cannot be on utility poles. Okay. Now, can, this, um, since, this is, since our, this is Desiree, um, can I, can I yeah. say something real quick? Yeah. So as far as posting the signs, if the best way to do them is to use the stakes or try and find a way to mount them in the ground instead of like on poles or something like that. As far as in neighborhoods and private streets and, and, and stuff like that, basically you want to be on the road side of the ditch pretty much. If you're on the street side, you're on county land and more than likely your sign is going to stay. If you put it close, like on the bush side of the ditch, you're on private and a lot of people will rip them out. If you put them at intersections, put them close to the sidewalk staked into the ground and you're not gonna lose your signs. If you put them further in from a sidewalk or an intersection you're going to lose your signs like chandra said don't put them on utility poles don't tape them up on light poles and stuff like that the best way to do it is stake them in the ground and do it like honestly look for places that other people have signs yeah you gotta do you have to do it on county or city property you you can't do it on the private side of a leeway so even in town if you put it on a business's side of the leeway they can just go out and rip it out 
I see Kayla in the chat has offered to make signs. Thank you, Kayla. Publicity, please get a hold of her. They probably can't hear you very well over there. Oh, okay. You tell them. Okay. Um, Kayla says I can make some sign. I can get some signs made into the club by Wednesday at the latest. If that works, I'm finally no longer snowed in. Knock on wood. Appreciate you. Yes. Any help we can get? If you you don't even have to bring them in. If you want to just post them, that would be great because that's been the hardest part is getting people to get. Because we Shonda and I were here and we made like 20 different signs one day, but we had nobody to help post them. I offered to put them out. Yeah, so that's, um, sure. if you can, you know, if you need to bring them to the club, that's fine. But if you can just post them, that would be even better. In uh, the future, may I make a recommendation? This is something I've heard from other events that do something like this. When you have an event that has multiple vendors, each vendor is required to make two signs. That's a suggestion. Events can talk to the vendor, see if that's okay. But considering, I mean, as far as these events go, I've gone to events like this. These are priced dirt cheap. Yeah. So in addition to what they're paying to get a table for them to make two signs should not be a serious hardship. And I did send out our graphics and our Facebook information to our vendors so that they can share them on their personal sites and things like that. And if they wanted to print them out and share them with their groups, they also have that option. And I think that was it. Brandy, did you have your hand up? Yes, um, I know that sometimes uh, people who have reader boards, if you email them, to say, hey, I'm holding an event. Sometimes they will, because um, they like to support the community. I know Port Orchard sometimes says that. Um, that you contact the businesses that have reader boards and they will sometimes put, um, hey, Bazaar at, you know, W, you know, whatever. If you have, uh, uh, you, you know, you gotta look at their board to see how, how you want it worded. But um, sometimes they'll do that for, like uh, real estate agents or schools. I don't know if they will, but um, but yeah, there's some businesses in Port Orchard that do it. So I'm sure there's some port businesses in maybe Bremerton that would do it. Um, Desiree mentioned the hardware store right on the corner of uh, Kitsap Way and National. I do know that they have a reader board there. Um, and then Suzanne asked about Peach Jar. Peach Jar, it is hit or miss. It is quite expensive and it's aimed more towards the kids. So sometimes um, sometimes it can benefit us, but sometimes it doesn't really match with our, our needs. I thought Peach Jar was free for nonprofits. We had to pay quite a bit. It was free for the schools, but even as a nonprofit, we still had to pay for ours. Uh, and Cheryl mentioned so that she suggests covering the, the signs with clear tape or somehow to pr protect from rain washout. And Desiree said also maybe look into the cost for advertising on the board right on the freeway by Kitsap Way. Um, we have looked into a couple reader boards that were uh, like the big one um, right by the freeway in front of the, what are the bless Baymont? You. Bless you. The Baymont, uh, and those were extremely expensive. They they kind of took our breath away when we were looking at that cost. Um, but yes, we if anybody is willing to help call around and look into things like that, we can use all the help we can get because um, our events are doing really well as far as the vendors and, you know, but we just need more publicity. We need the people. Um, and so the day before when we're setting up, we are going to try and get some balloons out and um, get that as well. And was there anything else anybody wanted to add about publicity or sign making? Mike make a comment on advertising. We have a lot of chain link fence across the front of our property and we can hang a bunch of those signs on the outside of the fence at 
the club has no objections to them hanging it along as they take them down when they're done. Um, I know that Shonda was looking into um, banners, the banners that can be reused at each event. And so that's actually one of the things that she was looking into as well as for that chain link fence is having the, the big banners. And I was looking at the vendors that are coming if they're going to make their own sign. Oh, I see. Plates for them to hang them. If we have one day. sign down that gets out the way that says events at West Side Improvement Club and our standing sandwich signs. Okay. You know, that brings them up here to make it see, read the signs on what's going to be happening. And if it's posted a week ahead of time, mm -hmm. it'll give everybody a chance to show up at the club. Exactly. All right. So community development uh, viewpoint park is closed until April. Uh, the community garden, we are still waiting on the right weather to clear that space. Um, but we, I don't know if we mentioned that um, it was originally going to be um, like $400, I believe, in order to rent the, um, the equipment in order to do it. The yes. homeschoolers have agreed to take on half that cost. So we will only be taking $200 of that cost to get that area ready for the garden. Does that include the replacement of the chain link fence that has to come down to get in? So yes, he was able to he was able to figure out how to do it so that it won't actually damage it and he'll be able to put it back up without without damages. Well, and it's also important to realize they're donating 200 of the $400 rental and he's donating all of his labor. I mean, he's a contractor. That's true. So he knows everything of what he needs to do. So it's not going to cost anything to take the fence down and put it back up. Except the raised beds that are down there have to be taken out. Yes, and they're aware. They're they're going to do that in, in the process as well. Yeah. Um, some home schoolers are taking... You sit there, you only know. Or I can take her. I, this is how I live my life, so... <laughs> Okay, um, so the Sunshine Committee, um, haven't heard much from Rose, Rose, but as far as I know, she has still been uh, doing her part. Um, the kitchen, we don't have any numbers or anything from the kitchen or representative for that right now, but once uh, Teresa gives the numbers for bingos. I will try to get those numbers for the kitchen as well. Um, and then new business. So at the last, uh, I believe it was the board meeting, uh, John it Becker, was it was the general meeting. Okay. So John Becker moved that the board members be reduced from seven to five to ensure we have a more reasonable quorum. Considering the size of our club. Yes. Uh, so this one needed to be, um, right. huh? I thought that you know, the board already has, you're talking about the entire, the entire board? The entire board has nine. I think yes. it says that there should be four, seven in four the officers bylaws. and five board members. Oh. So what are we reducing to what? I thought we were reducing the number of board members to three. That's, that's what it was. So yeah, okay. that's so that would be we're reducing from nine to seven. From nine to seven. Okay. So it needed to be presented to. Oh, that was sticky. Um. So I move that we. Well, actually, you made the initial move, and if you would like to. So if anyone has, if anyone disagrees, let us know. Uh, was there any, I'm going to call for the, well, yeah, was there any further discussion? Yes, um, Cheryl, that we'll have to change our bylaws then if that goes, we'll have to do that process. There may be some other things that will get changed too, but it's in the bylaws about the, the numbers. Yes, and that's why we needed to make sure that we presented it at the meeting to make sure that we can update those bylaws. Any further discussion? 
All in favor? Sally Oh, Sally Hansen. Say, call for the question. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. So that'll be a change on the bylaws. Yes, so we will get that updated to the bylaws and that means as of 2023, we will only be required to have a total of seven and not nine. Um, and then Cheryl, you did mention the nominations on agenda and voting. Yes, I did mean to put that on there. I do have the ballots uh, set up. I'm going to print those out and get those out in the mail ASAP um, so that we can get those votes in. Is there anybody currently here that is interested in putting their name on the ballot to be nominated for any position on the board of directors. You said there was a new person that just joined that was interested. Yes, and we've already got her on there. Yeah, okay. Do you guys meet together separately? The board? Yes, yeah. we have board met uh, the board meetings, um the Monday. I'm sorry. Third Monday. Yeah, the third Monday of each month. Okay, that's it. Okay. I didn't know if there was another meeting or okay. Uh, we tend to stay in contact through group me, uh, which is what uh, we do with a lot of the other committees as well. Uh, okay. But that tends to be the uh, the best way to get in contact with everybody as of right now. Okay. Um, and then Suzanne, I do see that you uh, asking about hiring new staff. We, yes, Malik, I believe is planning to leave in January. So if I, if I have heard correctly, we have him until then, and we will be looking into hiring um, janitors, uh, a new janitor, but I don't believe they're replacing him on um, bingo right now. Okay. Was there any other questions or anything that anybody else wanted to present for the betterment of the club? Greg Mitchell, go ahead. Yes, I was just wondering, um, is there any further pursuit of improving the fireplace? Or, or it was there was talk of getting a, a nice big screen, maybe secondhand screen or something and from uh -oh. habitat or something like that that we could put inside the insert and uh make it more visual make it more because the one that that's there now is is pretty small and tiny and it's kind of hard to see it's hard hard to see even through that tinted glass but so is there any um uh, interest in in upgrading that uh, here's what I would say personally, if you could give us a couple of uh, quotes and, you know, give us a couple of ideas of what the cost was, we could present it at the next meeting to see if the other members would be interested in taking on that cost. Okay. Um, somebody, I, I thought it was Matthew that might have said something about a big screen TV and being able to have access to one of those. Uh, I, I don't want to buy it new, obviously, if it's just going to get stuck inside behind a screen, but you know, secondhand one that we can plug in. But anyway, mm -mm. I, I don't know. It, it, is it something that would we want a functional insert? I would love to see that. Um, it's taken a back seat. I mean, lots of things have taken a back seat to what, whatever the crisis of the moment is. We still have floor in here that needs to be fixed. We've got AC that needs to be put in, but I would love to see that. And as far as my biggest concern right now about the insert is we need to get the chimney fixed before I'd be comfortable putting anything with electronics there because it could leak. If the chimney leaked, it would ruin whatever we put in there. Except there is a cover over the top of the chimney right now. As long as it's over the top, you won't get water down the rocks around the inside. And the damper can be closed if it's an electrical TV or whatever it is, it can be winterized. 
Well, I can talk to Paul when he's here upgrading the sound system on Friday. I'll, I was planning to unlock for him. I'll ask him. Uh, this is what he does. Wicked home stereo systems and TV systems and stuff like this. Wicked home theater is actually the, his business. So if I asked him about an insert over there, I'm sure he'd have something to say. Well, I know we don't want to put gas or electrical field in there because of the fire danger. Right. And yeah, this one is basically for ambulance. Or screen or whatever it is. All we need to do is make sure we've got power to the fireplace where we can plug it in instead of running an extension cord across the floor. Right. Yep. And we did have electrical plug hey, I'm Hey, hey, I'm hearing more Mickey Mouse than anything else. Sorry. Scarlett wants to share. Yeah. I understand and I love her and I appreciate her for sharing, but you know. Um, and Desiree did say she might have a TV to donate if needed. So there is a possibility for uh, something along those lines, but we do need to look into making the area yeah. safe for I it. would like to, yeah, if we can get it done right, I would love to have a TV that would fit in that space. I don't know about any of the rest of you, but I've had multiple times where I've stood next to a TV that had a fireplace video going, and I actually felt warmer. Yeah, like the one at the hospital used to be. Yeah. <laughs> so I can talk to him about getting an insert. I think it's a great idea because then on any time we'd have a fire, we could have the, you know, the, a fire for all, most intents and purposes. And then for other events, it would be an asset for that as well. So I'll talk to, I'll talk to Paul about that. Thank you. All right, anything yeah. else for the better of the club? Thank you for bringing it up again. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so Desiree is asking for the fireplace measurements. Uh, we will look into that. All right, so go ahead. Well, being that we do not have a regular fire in it, the screen that's on there can be, or the glass can be removed and a clear glass could be put over it or plexiglass. Yep. Just well, Come on, Mom. And the other problem we would have is that renters want to use it. Do we charge them for the use of it? And also to keep anybody from damaging. Well, I think it comes down to um, if they use it, they're charged. They're charged for damages, but not necessarily just for the use, because it would just be a switch of an on on or off. But Hopefully. yes, renters are charged for anything they damage. It wouldn't be any different. Exactly. All right, if there's nothing else, then we can move on to the member raffle. All right. Hold on, Scarlett. Okay. Other items from this last weekend, all of the case. Renee Toby, you won. They're sitting on the floor in there instead of in the cupboard where they belong because apparently somebody didn't have the key to unlock the cupboard. Oh, for the, yeah, the, yeah that was, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Oh. Well, I have Sorry. a coffee pot to put in the art locker in there. Hold I on. can't get to the locker. Okay. We'll get to it. Renee, Renee, are you still here? Yep, I'm here. Perfect. You won $25. Donate it. Where would you like to have it donated? To the club. Anywhere specific? Events. All right. Since I her did table, her table, her table fee. No, <laughs> not my table fee. <laughs> Thank you for your generosity, Renee. You're welcome. All right. Anything else? Then I move we adjourn. I second. Any opposed? Yeah, I have a question. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, they have, new, they have new buttons on the Zoom thing. Okay, now on the nomination process, I thought that we were supposed to be reading something from the floor, a nomination. You talked about sending out ballots because usually people 
um, are um, sworn in in January. But um, and Rex would probably know because Carol Carol Tauscher used to do that all the time. I thought you had to read from the at the meeting or something like that, and you you had to put what the candidates are. I mean, um, I don't have the process, but maybe Rex, you could you could uh, enlighten us a little more about that. Do do we have any positions that are challenged by two people running for it? No. Can we have the no, secretary? state for the fact that we cast a unanimous ballot for those that we have on mommy, record. Mommy, Well, we have to put a, a motion in. Seconded. That our nominated ballot is. is uh, yeah, but are they all filled? Are all we had some vacant ones? Are all the all of the positions? Do we have a name for them? So they're all filled or are there's going to be some that we don't have any names for? We currently have all of the positions filled, especially now that we've reduced the um, number of board members that we have. So I will go through the candidates. And okay. so okay. we have uh, the candidate for president, Matthew Barrett, vice president candidate, Chandra Kay, treasurer candidate, Brandy Wallace, secretary candidate, Kayla Sullivan, Board of Directors candidates, Sally Gill, Suzanne May or Susie Mapes, Cheryl Elfstrand, and Ashley Bridges. Is, are there any opposed to accepting a unanimous ballot? Move the nomination be closed. Secretary has accepting the unanimous ballot. The ballot the elected ballot. Okay, so okay. is that what you were looking for, Cheryl? Yeah, I just because I know we did that, it had to be done in December. I know that we had a couple vacancies, but now I guess with the reduction and it's full, so that's fine. But I we have it's a process that's in there that we have to do, so that's always raising that for that reason. Okay. So I will print that off with the little blurbs and I will be sending it out the um, official ballots ASAP. I think it's already been done. No. Not the ballots that have not been done. Oh, but I mean, but once you accept for that, that no. December meeting. Shane, we don't need to vote now. We don't, we don't need, need to vote. vote. Oh, so we can just accept that it is and I don't have to print no. out anything. Right. Perfect, because that's what but I was then, asking you about earlier. Yay. Yeah, I didn't know what we could do. The nominated ballot is the elected ballot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because we, we just voted on it. All we to notify the club of the new member. Of the unanimous ballot. Okay. Perfect. Well, then everybody is taken care of. We're done and we are adjourned. Amen. 8 09 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. 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 Bye -bye. Night. Key for the cupboard. I just keep. I'm trying to pass for money here.